Welcome back to Musical Theatre Auditions Tips for Success. In part one, I was at Chichester University where we got some top tips from Head of Musical Theatre Performance, Andrew Wright. Research the show itself, um, understand the show and the characters that are within the show. This time, I'm in the Isle of Man auditioning Singing in the Rain for Taylorian Productions. What I'm most interested in is your ability to sell the song. It's all about performance. Character, character, character. I'm here with Mandy Griffin, who is my assistant on the Isle of Man. And she's not only my assistant, she's a fantastic mezzo-soprano as well. Thank you. And a wonderful performer who's been through the audition process a few times. I have, more than a few times. And here we are, outside the most scary door to walk through. How do you prepare for going into an audition? I don't think it gets any easier the more times you've done it. I, I always make sure that I've really got a good grasp of the music. Yeah. If there's dialogue as well, to, to pretty much be sort of off script with that yeah, as yeah. much as possible. Um, and I think it's always good for me anyway, if I uh, sort of work through with a pianist uh, and also work through the script with a different person yeah. before, going before going into the audition yeah. room. Um, I know lots of people work through with their, with their teachers yeah. um, and uh, yeah, being prepared, that's, that's the key. And also being open-minded to whatever the director or musical director might ask you to do because they might want you to do it in a slightly different style. How, to how you've or, been rehearsing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so being open to that prepared, and giving yeah. it a go. Fantastic, thank you very much. Mandy's top tip is to know the music and the script. Prepare with a pianist and be open-minded to performing in different ways. The process of auditioning is slightly different here. It's basically an open audition for uh, anyone on the island age eight upwards. They've already been given the title song of the show to learn and prepare for their music audition. But let's talk with Chris Cumming, who's the director and choreographer for Singing in the Rain, about this way of auditioning. Effectively, everyone um, who auditions uh, has been invited to a dance school. But also, because of the amount of dance in Singing in the Rain, we've invited them for a second dance school as well. So there's been two dance schools. Um, and then anyone who wanted to be in the show had to do a generic dance call as such and uh, also sing the uh, audition piece yeah. selected by you. And then um, after that, if they want to audition for a principal, if you want to be auditioned or considered for a principal, you would then come to an um, uh, afternoon call. Mm. Um which is partly similar to how that works in the in the kind of pro world, um, whatever that that means. Yeah. But, um, you would you would do your dance calls and you would also then come and do your uh, part audition. Yeah, it, it runs slightly different to yeah. a, 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 a pro, pro. <laughs> uh, way, though. Yeah, it does. Why is that? I think um, so. Obviously, within our production of Sing in the Rain, uh, we work a lot with the community performers, people from within the community of the island um, can come and perform. And so it's about best seeing their kind of skill set and being able to, for them to be able to come in and relax. They don't do this every day. Mm. So actually in that moment, it's about allowing them to feel relaxed so that we can actually do the best of them. It's always that weird thing that an audition isn't, you know, always just about them singing and can they sing. It's yeah. about going, what can they do and how can we use their talent? Yeah. Well, I know I've given them music to sing, yes. but you don't give them any sides to read. Yes. I'm... But you tend to use the lyric from the songs? Why? Yeah, I think... Well, it's often in a script, there isn't a lot of dialogue, or it's, it's, it's dialogue, so you have to have someone else read in, mm. which is what would happen in the pro world. But for me, it, that just wastes time. And when you often have to see so many people and you only have a weekend to do it on, they know those words of the song. And it's also a real big test to see, can someone monologue back a song? Mm. You know, we always talk about in rehearsals how, have you monologued your song? Have you been through your song and worked out why you're singing and what your story is? And so it's interesting to hear someone actually they have to go back through the song as text mm. and explore it as if it's a conversation, which is obviously what a lot of songs are, an internal monologue or something mm. that's being explored through music. So you get them to do different things with the with the lyric, or you encourage them to yeah. 
But, you know, when, when someone comes to an audition, they can sing it and let's see what they've done with the song. And then part of that process is about seeing how, how do they respond to what we're going to say. If we're going to be working for, you know, four weeks in a rehearsal room with someone or three weeks, as it is, tends to be these days. Are they going to be able to respond to what we're asking? Mm. Are they going to listen to what we're asking and then be able to deliver? And you can always see if someone does or doesn't. Yeah. And then you go, OK, you've not managed to do that. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll move on, you know, um, or they do. And, and it's about seeing can they work in the way that we're going to work mm. in this process. What's your top tip for someone coming into an audition? Mm-hmm. I think it is about being you still. They always say that at drama school, be yourself at an audition. But I think beyond that, even at a audition level you are ultimately going to be that character so you need to find yourself within that character and why do you like that person even if they're a baddie what do you like about that person not because they're bad but what are the good things about that human being yeah that you can relate to excellent well thank Thank you very much thank you chris's top tip be yourself so my journey is almost at an end we have a cast for jekyll and hyde and we've almost got a cast for Singing in the Rain. For that show, the process goes on. But before I say goodbye, let's have a chat with Oliver Ormson, who was lucky enough to play the role of Elder Price in the London production of The Book of Mormon. But let's hear about the process he had to go through to gain the role of Lucas Beinecke in the UK and international tour of The Adam Family. So it started, I think it started in August, I think my first round was in August or September uh, 2017 or 16, no 16, 2016 and I was in, that was in, at the time I was in my second year in the Book of Mormon Mm. in the West End and before then, about July, I decided to leave Um, I was like, I want to go and get, you know, do new things. And then that audition came through yeah. uh, by my agent, and it was like a part, which because in Mormon I was a cover, yeah. and she was like, "Oh, do you want to do a part?" And I was like, "Yes, please." And um, so my first audition was in September at Umbrella Rooms, and I believe I had to have a song of my own, which I couldn't tell you what I sang. Yeah. I, oh, I know, I know exactly what I sang. I sang "Caught in the Storm," which is from uh, Smash. It's, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really good song. Jamie. You've, you've probably got a, a big book of yeah, songs yeah, to go yeah, and choose yeah. from. Yeah. So what, why did you choose that, that one, do you think? It was quite poppy, quite poppy sound, because yeah. um, obviously I was going for Lucas Beinecke, and in this show, the show is wonderful, because it has, it has such a wide spectrum of music styles, and Wednesday and Lucas, their style is like the pop. Yeah. And then you have like Gomez and Morticia's like Hispanic and like Latin like style of music. So anyway, yeah. I knew that was a good good choice. So I went in and sang that and I got given sides, just one scene. Mm. And that was we what we could now call the breakup scene, like when Lucas and Wednesday break up. So we did that in Umbrella Rooms. Yeah. And then there was another round, which was pretty much the same again, but the panel got bigger. And did you, did you sing the same song? Same song again, you, same song again. Did they say to sing the same song? Or? Yeah, they just yeah. said, just come back and sing the same song. And this, it was a really quick audition process, actually, thinking about it, because the next round was the final. So I only did three rounds, which is pretty, I find, these days, for like a new musical, pretty yeah. rare. Like the, for Mormon, I did eight, or eight rounds. So wow. it's, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so anyway, I, I booked a holiday um, with my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. And we were going to New York, and so I had to just leave and just go. Hope, hopefully, it, everything coincides, and I'll, it won't like clash with this yeah. holiday I booked. So I landed at JFK, and I turned my phone on, and I had a missed call from my agent. So I, I think I emailed them actually because I didn't want to like, yeah, you know, it was roaming. Use your data. <laughs> yeah, I emailed them and said, you know, what's going on? He said, you're back in on the Thursday, I believe, and we landed on the Thursday, and this is when I got all my material. So I got like one normal night, crazier than you, and then three scenes or four scenes. It was so that's when you like you were in the final. Here's all. So the you had all that material to learn on, whilst, whilst you're in New York. Yeah, on holiday. On holiday. And it was, it was um, one of those where I was trying to enjoy my holiday, um, but I kept on saying to my girlfriend at the time, I was like, I need to go back to the apartment and go over these lines because yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm anxious. Like you know, like because I was not really there enjoying my holiday. And so I had to go away and like do a couple of hours and then come out and see New York and things like that. <laughs> anyway, so I landed on the Thursday and I remember landing at 11 a.m. And I went straight home because my audition was actually originally like 2 o'clock, uh, t- uh, 2 p.m. 
I said to my agent, put me in the last slot. You have to call him because I land that day and I'm like, mm. I'm just scared. I'm going to be like zonked. And my voice won't be there and all that sort of stuff. So luckily they changed it. So I was like, I was the last slot of the day. And um, I remember coming home, just falling asleep for a couple of hours. I had to cancel another audition, which I had that day because I said, I can't, I need to focus on Adams. Mm. And I went back to Sadler's Wells to do it, the final. And this is where I walked in and it's in one of their studios and there was about 15 people in the room. Wow. So you had like all music and lyrics producers, uh, Katie Lipson, a uh, producer, Matthew, Stuart Matthew Price and his uh, his company producing. You had Andrew Lipper there, the first time I met Andrew Lipper. Um, then you had um, Matt White, Andrew Hilton, um, all these amazing people. And actually, Carrie Hope Fletcher, who at the time was offered um, Wednesday, a couple of weeks mm. before, prior. So she was there to read with you with us yeah. with the other yeah so myself yeah. and a couple more Lucases which were yeah. like up for up for grabs and yeah we just sort of went through the whole material I was a bit nervous because I didn't feel I had the perfect preparation being away and I only landed that no. morning but I knew my stuff which is like the big thing if you go in and know your stuff you can just sort of you can relax and not think about that because yeah. you know about other things um, so yeah it just sort of it was crazy because we were doing the scene, I was acting across uh, with um, Carrie, and she was playing Wednesday, uh, Lucas's um, obviously partner, so we had to be tactile and stuff and loving, but I never met her. I never, that was you the first know, time yeah. I met her. So I had to like hold her, but they'd be like, is that weird? Like, you know, it's really <laughs> weird. But yeah, and I got the job, and afterwards we were talking about it, and he said you had great like chemistry, and Carrie's got a really powerful voice, and he said about mine, he said you, you can match up with her, which yeah. is good. Like. You weren't like shine off on the on the duets. You were like up there with her. So yeah, you, that was great. it really. It Fantastic. Was That's a great story. Yeah. Now, you, you touched on there about going into the audition and being prepared, making yeah. sure that uh, you know your stuff. What is that a top bit of advice that you would give, or is there anything else you'd like to um, advise about auditions? I think, yeah, I think I, because I've done auditions when I've not a time to fully learn it or you know I've, I've, I've put it on the back burner and then it's come around and I've, I've, I mean, I've gone in to the, the audition whether holding the sides or not being fully confident and you, there's no way you can give your 100% your hundred percent if no. you're doing that because 50% of your brain is not thinking about acting and not thinking about reacting to someone you might be reading across it's, it's elsewhere going trying to recite your lines yeah. and you naturally can't do your best um, so yeah 100% I'd say you have to um, be off book, especially in a final. There's no, there's no excuse. There's no there. excuse. Yeah. Like the, the, you know, people say first round, you know, and depending on the time that you, you've been given to mm. learn the stuff. But on the first round, yeah, maybe you can hold your side. Yeah. But if you want a job, and the, that's you know that's the, the, the most important place. Like yeah. the first round and the last round are the most important. You have and to put the work in. Yeah, you have to put the work in. And I don't think it reflects that well, I don't think, especially in a final. So yeah. that would be my advice. Yeah, I'd definitely say get off book for the final, 100%. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's all right, man. Oliver's tip, learn your lines. So, to summarise what we may have discovered along the way, do the research. Find out as much as possible about the show, its characters, and even the panel. Be open-minded. Prepare to perform in different ways. Be yourself. Well, there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this insight into the audition process. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.